What's up friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Keelan and today we're going to be discussing Kindle Vela. So for anybody who doesn't know, Kindle is an app, it's a platform, it's where people can go to read eBooks. It is a company owned by Amazon or it is a part of Amazon and it is one of the best ways for self-published authors to get their books out into the wilderness. <laughs> so as a self-published author myself, when Amazon announced their newest platform, Kindle Vela, I was super interested and immediately wanted to know everything about it. So essentially, Kindle Vela is going to be a platform through which authors can publish serialized slash episodic work. If you don't know what that is, episodic or serial fiction are shorter pieces of works that come out not all at the same time, kind of like a TV show, like a weekly or monthly reoccurring piece of fiction in the same storyline. And they're like mini episodes. Essentially, just think of your favorite TV show. It probably has 10 episodes in a series, 22 episodes in a series. That's what episodic fiction is. So Kindle Vela is designed specifically to publish that kind of fiction. We've already seen plenty of websites that do this. One of the biggest examples is the Toronto-based company Wattpad, which publishes both fan fiction in serialized format and original fiction in serialized format. Kindle Vela will be all original fiction. So what I'm planning to do with this video is dive into the nitty gritty of a few different things when it comes to Kindle Vela. The first is content. So what content is going to be available on Kindle Vela and what content can authors publish onto Kindle Vela? The second is engagement. So what are the different engagement features that Kindle Vela is expected to have? And then we're going to get into money. So we're going to spend two different sections on money. The first is the actual financial model of the app itself. What is that model going to look like? And then the second part of our financial talk is actually going to be on expected author royalties. So Kindle Vela hasn't announced yet. I just want to clarify this. This section disclaimer is going to be a lot of speculation because Kindle Vela hasn't yet announced their token price. However, on the video that they published, and I'll link that down in the description box below, there is a screenshot of a page that does look like a pricing page. So we're going to take that and extrapolate what royalties for authors could look like. And then we're going to get into my biggest pet peeve about the platform. And that's going to be section number five. We're going to leave that to the end though. And it's just kind of a personal rant. So if you're not, if you're not into personal rants, you can watch the whole rest of the video. It's going to be very informative. And then we're going to get into my personal rant. Also, I apologize. The sun is setting. So the lighting is changing as we speak. So section number one that we're going to be talking about today is the actual content. So as an author, what content can you put into Kindle Vela? And as a reader, what can you expect? So far, this is what we know. The episodes in Kindle Vela will be anywhere from 600 to 5,000 words long and they will be priced accordingly. Um, essentially, it is episodic fiction, so authors will be able to upload fiction in a serialized format where it comes out like there's an episode that releases and then another episode that releases, etc. I've had the chance to explore the platform a little bit and it does look like there's a place where you can indicate whether it is a complete work or a work in progress so readers can know whether or not they're getting into something that might discontinue in the future. And so that is how you will be releasing content as an author. What readers can expect is they can expect to see serialized fiction, essentially. So they can expect to read a chapter and then potentially have to wait for the next chapter. From what I gather, the first up to three chapters on Kindle Vela, and I'm using chapters and episodes interchangeably, so bear with me everyone, but up to the first three episodes on a Kindle Vela work will be free, and then after that readers will have to pay using tokens. We'll get into that later in the financial section, but they'll have to pay using tokens. So essentially, what can you expect? Authors can expect to upload serialized content, readers can expect to read serialized content, Again, this isn't content. Like let's say you have a book that's got 10 episodes, all of the episodes will not be released at once. That is what episodic fiction is. So let's dive into the content for authors a little bit. So the first point that authors have to realize is anything you put on Kindle Vela cannot be uploaded anywhere else unless it is taken down and unpublished from Kindle Vela. So if you're uploading an episodic fiction to Kindle Vela, 
that you then want to release as a novel, you have to take that down from Kindle Vela before you go ahead and release it as a novel. So that's point one. Point two, and I'm apologies, I'm looking over at some notes over here, but point number two, you cannot publish content onto Kindle Vela that is either public domain and freely available on the web. So if you're publishing something for free through your blog, it is freely available on the web. It cannot also be published on Kindle Vela. I've seen some people discussing this on Reddit, but I think that point on Amazon's website makes it print pretty clear that if you're publishing something for free, you cannot also publish it on Kindle Vela. And the third point is you cannot take a previously published work and break it down and then republish it on Kindle Vela. They are not allowing that at this moment. So those are the three kind of important points for content. I'm sure as we get more information about this new app and this new way of publishing, authors are going to learn more about what can and cannot be published on Kindle Vela, but this is what we know for now. So hopping into section number two, Kindle Vela has some really interesting engagement features that we can expect as authors and as readers. There's three that they've highlighted on their website that I personally find particularly interesting. So people are going to be able to engage with your story in the following ways. They'll be able to follow a story as a reader, you can follow a story and as author, readers can follow your story and then get a notification every time a new episode is released. Folks can also give your story a thumbs up, like a like. And then finally, what I think is kind of cool is each week readers can crown, I'm putting that in quotations, they can crown a story, their favorite story of the week. So there is the thumbs up function and then there's this additional function that's saying, hey, this was my favorite story that I read this week. So I think that's really interesting, those engagement features that Amazon has plugged into this new Kindle Bella. Let's get into the financial model. And I'm going to, I apologize, I already know in advance I'm going to be a little bit biased here, but that's because I just hate, hate financial models like this. Like, uh, I hate it so much. So Kindle Vela is not like Kindle. It's not a, um, or Kindle Unlimited, I should say. It's not a subscription-based financial model. So with Kindle Unlimited, you pay a subscription and then that goes into a pool and then all of that money gets distributed to authors based on how many pages of their books have been read. Kindle Bella is not like that. It pisses me off and this is why it pisses me off. It pisses me off from a consumer standpoint, not necessarily from an author standpoint, because what they're doing instead is they're using tokens. Now we don't necessarily have any confirmation other than a screenshot of the video of how much these tokens are gonna to cost, how many tokens you need to pay per chapter. Although we do know that the number of tokens that you'll have to spend to purchase an episode is going to be based on that episode's word count length. And we know the word count length is between 600 and 5,000. So we can assume the maximum like purchase is going to be for 5,000 words. Essentially, what you do as a consumer is you'll purchase bundles of tokens and then you can spend those tokens to purchase episodes. And the reason I hate this is because it's something called microtransactions. They're very small transactions. So you can buy a bundle of, I forget what it says on the screenshot, I'll have to go back and check, but like 770 tokens for $9.99. And then let's say each chapter is like 50 tokens. It just encourages you to keep making purchases and you, you don't realize how much you're spending because you'll spend 50 tokens on a chapter and then that quickly adds up and then you have to buy another bundle for $9.99 and then you don't realize like the, to keep track of the number of tokens spent and the cost of those tokens is just, it. it's, I don't know. I think when companies do this, it makes me so mad. I feel like it's just irresponsible and it's tricking the consumer into spending more because you don't initially realize how much you're spending. So essentially, it's a microtransaction type platform where you purchase a bundle of tokens and then you get to spend those tokens on the platform. I hate it. I hate it. And this isn't my rant, but I hate it. As a consumer, I hate it. I think it's, like I said, irresponsible because what happens is, is people really enjoy the stories so they want to purchase more and then they end up purchasing way more tokens than initially planned and then they spend tons of money on one or two pieces of fiction. And you'll see in the assumptions that I've made when it comes to the royalties, how much like these books will cost. So 
Without further ado, let's get into the next section where we're going to talk about royalties. And we're going to be doing a little bit of math in this section, but what we know for certain is that authors are going to take home 50% of the cost of the tokens that are spent on their novel. So if I spend 100 tokens on somebody's novel, reading their episodes, I get 50% of whatever those 100 tokens cost. So basically what that boils down to is as an author, my royalty is 50%. Now with a Kindle ebook priced over a certain amount, like a $4.99 Kindle ebook, your royalty is 70%. And we're going to break down those costs right now. All right, everyone. So Math Keelan here. I'm hoping this isn't coming out as inverted. Oh gosh, it is. And I went through the trouble of writing it on a page just so everybody can see. I actually did all the calculations on my computer, but I did go through and write it all out here. Instead of showing it to you on this paper is I will talk you through it and then pop the calculations up. So hopefully you can see some items here, but this is for KDP. So when it comes to KDP and publishing through KDP in a typical way, so not through Kindle Vela, so just to Kindle, if you're publishing an ebook, you can get a 70% royalty. So for this hypothetical scenario, we're going to say you have a 100,000 word novel and you could either publish it through KDP or through Kindle Vela. Kindle Vela is also through KDP, but you know, we're gonna, okay, Kindle or Kindle Vela, that's what we'll go with. So through Kindle, if you publish at $4.99, your 70% royalty will be approximately $3.50. So that's how much you'll be making every single time you sell a 100,000 word novel. Now, with Kindle Vela, we currently, based on the screenshot we have, know that there are three different token bundles and you have to use tokens to purchase these stories on Kindle Vela. So the first token bundle is 140 tokens, and that will get you two chapters or more. So because it's two chapters or more, we can assume, or I've assumed, that if you're only getting two chapters for 140 tokens, that means those two chapters are the maximum length. They are as long as possible. And we know that that is 5,000 words. So. For 140 tokens, you can get two 5,000 word chapters. That is the assumption. And that costs you $1.99. So from that, we can calculate the cost per word. And the cost per word is 0 0.000199 per word. So we can calculate the cost per word. So we can do that with each of the different packages. So the second package is 368 tokens and that will get you, you seven or more chapters. Again, we have to assume that if you're only getting seven chapters, that means they are the maximum length because we know that the pricing is based on word count. If it says seven or more chapters, that means that if you're only getting seven chapters, each of those chapters is as long as they can be, which is 5,000 words. So again, we assume that the chapter is as long as it can be, which is 5,000 words and you're getting seven chapters. So the price per word comes out to 0 0.000142 dollars per word. Same thing goes for 770 token package that will get you 15 chapters or more. Again, because of the or more, we're assuming that if you get only 15 chapters, they are the longest possible. And that package is 9.99 and that will end up being 0.000133 dollars per word. So now we have all of the cost per words for each of the different packages. Obviously, just like any kind of micro transaction system, the more you buy at once, the cheaper the package, right? So this, these are the three packages that we've seen. So Again, we've assumed that there are 5,000 words in a chapter. So what I've also done is I've also assumed that because you can get up to three free chapters as a reader on Kindle Vela, we're gonna assume that all those three chapters are also 5,000 words, just to be fair. So if we assume that the first three chap chapters are 5,000 words, that means a reader, if they read through your entire novel, they're only going to pay for 
85,000 words because three chapters at 5,000 words are free and it's a 100,000 word novel. Again, we've assumed the first three chapters are 5,000 words. They might not be. It's an assumption we're making. So in each of these scenarios, the reader is paying for 85,000 words. In the first scenario, the 140 token package at 199 would end up costing the reader, and this is why I hate microtransactions, it would end up costing the reader $16.92 to read the entire novel. That's how much it would cost them in tokens, $16.92. So if you multiply that by a half, because the royalty is 50%, the author would take home $8.46. In the second scenario, where there are 368 tokens for seven chapters at $4.99, the reader would end up paying $12.07. And that would end up being a $6.04 royalty for the author. And in the third scenario, that is 770 tokens for 15 chapter chapters at $9.99. The reader would end up paying $11.31 to read the entire novel, and the author would take home $5.66. All in all, the royalties are obviously going to benefit the author based on this math and based on the token prices that were advertised in the video. There is no confirmation that these token bundle packaged pricings are final. No indication this is entirely speculation. But based on those, based on those numbers, that's how much you can expect to make as an author. So it, it varies greatly, right? So let's say one reader just keeps buying the smallest packages. Potentially off that reader, you can make up to $8.46 for a 100,000 word novel. But let's say they're buying the larger bundles, then you can make $5.66. So the answer to what are the royalties an author can expect is it will vary depending on the size of the package that the individual reader has purchased. However, this goes back to my previous point where microtransactions are extremely exploitative because people just keep buying and then they end up spending $16.92 on an ebook when they could have purchased that ebook for $4.99 or for $7.99 or for $8.99 through King Kindle at a regular price. Hey everyone, editing Keelan here. So on the Kindle Vela website, there is now an image that shows a different package and pricing mechanism for the tokens than was included in their video. They do say token pricing may change, but essentially I've gone through and I've taken those packages and made the same assumptions as in the previous math that we've done and broken down each of the different packages and their price for purchase. Essentially, if these are the packages that Kindle decides to go with, this is much more reasonably priced for the reader. However, I do still think microtransactions are quite exploitative because the people who are purchasing don't necessarily know how much they are spending because they are buying tokens and bundles, and so they actually aren't fully aware of the dollar value for each thing they are purchasing. I have gone through though, and the cost seems much more reasonable. So this is the cost per 100,000 words. So if there's a 100,000 word episodic fiction, so I have made the assumption that the first three episodes are 5,000 words and they're free. So really the reader is paying for the additional 85,000 words. Now, if we look at these royalties, they are much more similar to the royalties that you will get via publishing an ebook through Amazon Kindle. So we're getting a 422 royalty, a 424 royalty, which doesn't really make sense why their 525 token package is more expensive than their 200 package, but it is. And then we've got a 386 royalty and a 374 royalty. So I went through and I used the exact same assumptions as before with this new package. Again, Kindle Vela says these are not the final prices. They may be subject to change. Who knows? Maybe they'll use the prices in the video. And I still personally think that the microtransaction is very exploitative. Just think of the last time you purchased a quote unquote free app and there were all these tiny little in-app purchases where you had to purchase like an in-app currency to then buy other things in the app. You lose track of how much money you're spending so quickly. And I personally think that it's unfair that Amazon and Kindle are setting up their new platform in this way. So as you can see, based on the numbers of available as an author, you're definitely going to be making higher royalties publishing the same amount of words on 
Kindle Vela. However, this does go back to my previous point about the financial model of Kindle Vela and the tokens and how people are going to unexpectedly be paying a ton of money for episodes. This section is based entirely on speculation and based off of the screenshot that Kindle included in their video. So this may change these prices. I am definitely are not saying they're final by any means, um, but this is the information that we have right now. So that's what I'm going off of. All right, and now we get to the last section of the day, which is just me ranting about my Kindle Vela pet peeve, is that right now it's available to American authors only. So you have to be US based to be putting stories onto Kindle Vela. So right now, as a Canadian author, I was able to access the Kindle Vela platform, but I was not able to, there's I think a button that says like save and publish, um, and I get a notification every single time saying that you have to be US based. Now, I get companies having to beta things, I get it. But as a Canadian, I have felt personally victimized. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mean Girls reference, sorry, I thought it was being funny there. Um, I have felt personally victimized though by KDP and Amazon, and there's a multitude of reasons for that, and I'm just going to briefly list them all off because this is my YouTube channel, so I feel like I can write. But as a Canadian, and if you're a Canadian, let me down, know it down in the comments below your biggest Amazon Kindle pet peeves, but as a Canadian, this is what we have to deal with. They recently in 2019, October 2019, set up a printer in Canada to print books from Canada. So self-published paperback books in Canada, print on demand. However, when we order author copies, those still come from the US. So we have to pay an exorbitant, um, we have to pay like a huge amount of shipping on them. It actually ends up being cheaper and ends up being faster to just drop your price on Amazon, order your book, in paperback format through amazon.ca and then receive them that way versus ordering author copies. So that is what I have done in the past. I've dropped my price as low as it can go for the paperback, ordered it through amazon.ca, get it in two days through Amazon Prime or whatever. And then like it's $2 cheaper per book than the author copies because even though the author copies are only like $5, they have to ship from the States, it's super expensive. Anywho. That's pet peeve number one. There's a printer in Canada, yet we still cannot get author copies from Canada. Pet peeve number two, during the pandemic, proof copies to Canada were, were they didn't exist. We couldn't get proof copies from Amazon, proof copies of any physical book to Canada, just couldn't happen. Um, and it, yeah, just, just a giant pet peeve of mine. Three, is this Kindle Vela. I, I mean, that's, I'm not gonna go into more of my qualms with Amazon, but those are my three. Uh, Kindle Vela not being available in Canada. And the reason that is a pet peeve of mine is because I feel like this is the first time that I'm like early to the game when it comes to self-publishing. And, you know, early adapters of technology usually get ahead. And in this case, anybody who is not from the United States kind of, kind of is taking a back seat and is at a disadvantage, which like pisses me off. It would have been nice if they maybe like did a random sample from all of the Kindle users or like KDP users. I don't know, just a thought. Anyway, that's it for today. Let me know down in the comments below if you're excited for Kindle Vela. I know I'm excited. I know there was a lot of pet peeves that I have, but like I'm excited. I love episodic fiction. As a as a retired fan fiction junkie, episodic fiction used to be my fiction of choice. So I am very excited for this new platform. I hope you are too. Let me know your concerns or what you're excited about down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'd enjoy a ton of my other videos. So I'm gonna link up in the cards a writing vlog for you to go and click on and enjoy and would so appreciate if you hit that like button and if you know, you think that you would like this channel, the subscribe button, hitting the subscribe button. Wow, I just couldn't say that word. Hitting the subscribe button would be wonderful as well. Thank you so much for watching and talk to you later. Bye.